What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from MTG Headquarters and it is Eldritch Moon release time. Yay! Here we have my official midnight booster box opening. It looked like it wasn't going to happen, but then I had a random box from Wizards of the Coast sitting at my door when I got home and well, it had a booster box and a fat pack in it. So thank you Wizards. Uh, you made my subscribers very happy, and as well myself, because I don't have to disappoint you all. I know a lot of you stay up and wait for my midnight boxes, but didn't look good this time. But here we are, nonetheless. All right, let's get going right away. We're going to do this mostly just to sauce. We're going to look at Chicken and Eldrazi Horror. Basic land. Flip card is Conduit of Storms. And our very first rare is Ulvenwald Observer. Brown Yard Behemoth, Crop Sigil, and Haunted Dead. I wish I had spent more time with the set. Um, it's still pretty new to me. Oh, we have a Foil Nefalia Academy. And we have a... Uh, Midnight Scavengers flip card, and we have an Eldritch Evolution. Not to be confused with El Elric, as I was calling it. So hopefully, I don't know, my international viewers, um, you may be already on your way to pick up your boxes, but this is my first box. We've got a Curious Homunculus and a Collective Defiance. I think Escalate's not a bad ability. I mean, I can say especially in limited play, Faith and Unbroken is very strong too. Uh, because, I mean, having a late game mana is good. And most of that cycle are all pretty good. One of them seemed pretty crummy. I don't remember which one. I mean, Foil Skurzdad Supplicant. Graph Rats. And a Spear of the Hunt. Very solid card. 3-3 three, three Flash Flyer. Can't really complain about that. I have, in all my intro decks and my two pre-releases, I have not opened any Planeswalkers. But that's not that crazy. We have a Smoldering Werewolf. And a Niblis of Frost. It's going to be interesting to see where Standard goes now because it's so diverse. But definitely a lot of cool cards in this set. We have a wolf token. Sorry about that. Grizzled Angler. And we have a Blood Hall Priest. This was my promo rare, I believe. 4-4 four, four for 4. Anytime you can get equal power and toughness for the same mana cost, that's good value. Usually it'll have some sort of drawback. Especially in like a 4-4. Maybe, you know, a bear. It's fine. Brazen Wolves. Vildian, Vildian out, Pack Outcast. And we have an Oath of Liliana. Blood Mist. I think people are on the fence about Blood Mist. A few people have asked me what I think of the card. I think in Limited, it's bonkers in, in a beatdown deck. Zombie Token. Ovenwall Captive. I think that's very solid two drop. And we have an Elder Deep Fiend. I know you guys are trying to change my mind on Emerge, but I just don't think it's that great. I know there are situations where it is, but there are plenty of situations where it isn't. So we see the half of the graph rats that can form chittering hosts and we have lupine prototype <clears throat> keeping my piles nice and clean for you guys this will be some combination of from the just the sauce and a regular opening we have a handware battlements this thing turns into a giant creature very strong i i mean in Commander, certainly. Um, 
I don't see that being played in standard or modern. But not a limited, I'm not a constructed guru. I thought this was a foil murder for a second. That would have been spicy. And we have Guy Reach Sanitarium. Uh, eh. Not the rare you want to open and draft, I could tell you that. Unsubstantiated, I'd rather uh, take that. There's a lot of uncommons I take over that in a draft. Zombie token. Why do they always have purple? Well, I guess Liliana. Apparently Liliana also makes her eyes purple. We have a Grim Flare, our first mythic. 2-2, two, two, a trample. Whenever it deals combat damage, you'll play a look at the top three cards of your library, put any number of them in your graveyard, and the rest back on top of your library in any order. Also, it's Delirium, where it gets 2 plus 2, as long as there are four more card types. That is very strong. I know the Dredge players are always gleeful when anything with graveyard interaction comes out that's good, and I think that card's definitely playable. Extractor of Sin. And we've Distended Mindbender. I think I'm going to off the Mythics. These videos have been getting dangerously long, and um, some people don't mind like the 20 minute video, but I think the vast majority of people would prefer I get through these a little bit quicker. We have a Splendid Reclamation. That's more graveyard love. Seems kind of cool. Return all the lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So if you're self-milling or discarding a bunch of lands, you can get them back. We have a spider token. Cryptolith fragment. And a coax from the blind eternities. There seems like a lot of kind of... Ah, dang it, I got this wrong order. Kind of like a lot of poopy... Mythics and poopy rares in this set. <laughs> but you gotta have poop rares so that the non poop rares feel less poopy, if you know what I mean. I think you do. The key is, you know, less poop, the, make the non poop less poop. So booster boxes will be available tomorrow. By the time this gets uploaded, it'll probably be tomorrow. Do a lot of uh, game shops do midnight releases? Impetuous Devils. This card is very good. I don't know where it will see play outside of. That's a cool. That's sweet art. I don't know where it'll see play outside of limited, but it is bananas good. It's basically like ball lightning, right? It's very good. Overall Captive. Graph Rats. Gosh, so many Graph Rats. I'm always opening Graph Rats. And Liliana. We've got the Super Chase Rare right now of the set. Of course, whenever new sets come out, Planeswalkers are always the Chase Rare. Three mana, three loyalty, plus one. Up to one creature gets minus two minus one until next turn, so she protects herself. That's step one. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's very good. And at minus seven, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of your oven end step, put X, two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is a number, is two plus the number of zombies you control. Gosh, I want to see zombies in standard. Please let there be zombies in standard. Oh, Tammy, come out and play. Thalia. There we go. Liliana and Thalia. Very good in beat down decks when you want to just turn your deck sideways and attack. Thalia puts you ahead and keeps you ahead. If you hit your turn one, turn two, uh, like turn one creature, turn two creature, turn three Thalia, it's almost impossible to catch back up. Dawson of Perfection. And that flips into Final Iteration. Very good in its final form. Oh, wait a minute. What the heck? Oh, that was a flipper error. Sorry. And we have Stromkirk uh, Condemned. Vampire Horror. 
Vampires in Standard and Zombies in Standard would be awesome. I would have to give Wizards mad props. I don't know enough to look ahead that far, but that would be awesome. Oh, there's a murder in there too. Premium removal. Foil land. Lone Rider. And we have a Crypt Breaker. Pump out those zombies. It's always very good. Especially if you have Liliana. Ooh, we have our emblem, thankfully. Kessig Prowler, I think a great one drop. Lots of value. And another Impetuous Devils. So how many of you were able to attend a pre-release? Hopefully a good chunk of you. Spidey Sense token. Smoldering Werewolf. Werewolves are really strong. Sanctifier of Souls. That's very good, too. I'm not really looking for anything in particular other than spicy pulls. Um, hopefully, once... I've been working since 6 a.m. It's 10 p.m. right now. So hopefully life will calm down a little bit. Advanced Stitchwing foil. Overall Captive. And a Collective Effort. I don't know if this will see play because of the sorcery speed, but it is quite strong. I mean, you could destroy a power four or greater, plus put a 1-1 one -one counter on each target cre each creature target player controls. That seems pretty good for uh, pay three mana and tap a single creature. It seems like too much value to not play. But again, our oh, we have a foil. Our foil rare is Nibbles of Frost. Wah, wah. And we have Thalia's Lancer. Five, five, five mana for a four, four first strike but you can go get a legendary. So that seems pretty good. I mean, not for standard. I kind of have, there's like this, you know, five mana. <laughs> it's gotta be like Siege Rhino good for me to be like, oh, that's gonna see standard play. But I'm also not, you know, admittedly, I'm not a mad bro. Hey, we got ourselves a Bruna, there we go. Hopefully we can get Gisela now. Oh, and a Tamio! <laughs> Tamio! So we ended up with a Bruna and a Tamio in the same pack. So we got Tamio and Liliana in this box. Thank you! Thank you! Four mana, four loyalty. Plus one, protects itself. Choose up to two target creatures until your next turn. Whenever either of those creatures deals combat damage, you draw a card. Actually, that doesn't really protect itself. Um, minus two... Tap up to two target non-land permanents. They don't want to tap during the controller's next end step. That does protect itself, but you got to do minus two. The minus seven is basically what omniscience. Cast whatever you want, whenever you want. Good box, though. I love these little horror tokens. These are pretty spicy. We got imprisoned in the moon. You live in the moon now. I mean, that's okay though, because it's made of cheese, right? No one's ever landed on the moon, as far as I know. Nobody could prove it. We've got a human wizard. Oh, I was like, oh, is that another Tamio? <laughs> Heron's Grace Champ. This is very good. 3 3 flash, lifelink. When I answer the battle, other humans you control get plus one, plus one, and get, li get life ugh, get lifelink till end of turn. Certainly a great card to draft or in seal, if pull in sealed for green white humans, which is a very popular archetype in this format. I don't, I don't think, I think there's only room for one good deck at the table. So I think having the guts to go with a different archetype is going to pay you off. It seems like everyone kind of forces that. Preeminating mass. What do you guys think of that card? You know, it's a one three for one, which is great. But then anything it blocks, I didn't play it at my pre-release because I didn't know, like, I didn't know if it would be any good. Mausoleum Wanderer. The art in this set is amazing. Whispers of Emrakul. So we have three mythics already. 
Could we find ourselves an Emrakul? Maybe not. But uh, Tamio and Liliana seems pretty good. Insect token. The tokens are on point this set too. Cigar to Zaid. Uh, meh, I guess. <clears throat> I'm like permanently not a fan of enchantments because I'm not a fan of getting two for one. It's especially terrible and limited, so I'm extra, and that's mostly what I play, so I'm extra cautious. Crypto with Fragment. And a Horf, Horf, Commander Worf in Infiltrator. Morn Willow. Markov Crusader and Abandon Reason. I'm really glad I could bring this to you. The job, the new job is kind of kicking my butt. However, I'm going to go to bed after filming this and I'll be in bed before mi uh, midnight. Vol Voldarian Pariah. Another solid vampire card that flips into our Abolisher of Bloodlines. And we have a Harmless Offering. No? All right. Sorry, I have four cats. Don't judge me, bros. It's no cult, but that thing's pretty darn cute. Alchemist greeting, foily. That looks beautiful in foil. And we have identity thief. I'm pretty excited to draft this. Uh, with my new work schedule, I don't know if I'm going to get to paper draft it at all, but I can tell you I will be pre-releasing. I, I swore I would not invest any more money into MTGO, and I'm sticking by that, but I'm slowly selling off my collection to keep tickets in the account, so hopefully I can stream again, Liliana's Elite, and do some pre-releases and do some gameplay footage. Elder Deep Fiend. Hopefully do some gameplay footage in... <clears throat> in place of the IRL drafts. Hopefully, you know, by fall, I'll be able to go back to draft, but this is not on when you play this game. Just life happens sometimes, and that's just how it is, you know? When you got bills, you got to pay those bills. And we have Deploy the Gatewatch, a bunk rare, except in EDH. But... Look at the top seven cards and get two Planeswalkers. I mean, it's a crazy spike. I mean, ca it's a casual all-star, right? Casuals are going to love that card. Last pack. Thanks a lot for Wizards for sending this, and thanks to all of you for hanging out. Let me tell you something. I've got several boxes arriving tomorrow on Friday by 8 p.m. Central. I will film all of them, and I will inundate you with Eldritch Moon openings. I've already filmed a couple new Fat Pack Fridays. And so I hope that you'll give the channel a chance and subscribe. And we have Lupine Prototype. And hang out. Working hard to keep. I've done a bunch of top five lists on paper that I have to shoot videos for. So I've got some interesting content uh, for the week coming up. Um, the Mythic... Recap, obviously, is Tamio uh, and Liliana. And we got Grimflare, too. I feel like that card could be pretty spicy. Um, I don't know where it's sitting now in terms of, if you know, most Mythics right now are pretty spendy, but I don't know, you know, if it's con or not. But I don't care. Like, I'm just giving up on worrying about prices other than getting pumped about Mythics. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to work on my fat pack next. Both of them will be up tonight. We'll talk to you again real soon. What's up? And thanks for watching this video. I produce all different kinds of content. So if you haven't yet, click on my face to subscribe. If you want to watch more videos, I've got some sweet playlists, including this one, where I open up every fat pack ever created. I've also got this one over here where I open just about anything vintage and old and expensive for your enjoyment. And all this is made possible by the awesome backers at our Patreon, which is linked in the description of every video. Hop on over there, check it out, see if it's something you might want to consider. If not, sit back, enjoy, and I'll still love you.